guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about the Republic of Ireland squad that was announced by Stephen Kenny, I think, yesterday uh, for the upcoming friendlies against Andorra on Tuesday and Hungary on Thursday. Daz Hartnett's with me today to go through it all. How are you, Daz? Hi, Keith. All good. How are you? Excellent stuff, man. No, good stuff. We'll go through it, Daniel. I suppose we start off with goalkeepers. Always a good place to start, isn't it? We've got Darren <laughs> Randolph, we've got Creevin Kelleher, and we've got uh, Gavin Bazuna in no real surprises as such. Um, although uh, Travers isn't in the squad. Um, what what do you make of that overall? Yeah, look, it seems there is three goalies that is probably going to call upon you know for September as well, and probably wanted to keep them the same. We're not blessed with abundance of keepers, and there's no one in the league of Baron absolutely outstanding at the minute who probably should get a call up either. Um, you know. Actually, one thing that kind of a bit surprised me was, you know, he could have thought about bringing Westwood. He's been playing quite a lot with Czech Bill Wednesday. He didn't bring him, but look, he's old. He's probably out of plans anyway. So he brought Randolph safe hands. He brought Kelleher, who we know has, you know, been playing with Liverpool and he's been in and around the squad. And Bazoon, who played most of the season, Rochelle. No real surprises. And hopefully he gives all three keepers a, some game time, I hope, anyway. Yeah, do you think he should um, air in the side of going with, say, Kelleher and Bazuna a little bit more than Randolph? Because we all know what Randolph can do. But um, I certainly think Kelleher will start at least one of the games anyway because he was missing the last time, you know what I mean? But uh, would you air on that side? Because uh, although it's important to try and get a win, I know he hasn't won and he'd love to get that monkey off his back, to be honest. At the same time, we know what Randolph can do. So, you know, give the other two a go and see who wins the battle, maybe, so to speak, for, for second choice, possibly. Yeah, look, that's true. Like even you know, Randolph was injured for the last ones. We had to call upon different goalkeepers, so it was a problem. I think we discussed there a few months back too, saying what if Randolph gets injured, who steps in? So it is important to use your squad and to use these players in friendly matches. Although look, Kenny hasn't got a win yet. You know, he's still looking for a win. So a safe pair of hands and goals, someone who's experienced, who can command defenders, who can put confidence in the team. I would, I would give Randolph one game, a full game, and start him in one of the games anyway. And then I'd probably like to see Keller or, or Bazunu play a half each or even Keller play a full full game and another friendly. But I would be, for me, I would be going with Randolph anyway to try and secure a win and get a win when you get a win. Funny thing is, I think I'd be more likely to play Keller dash Bazuna against Hungary because I think they're more likely to be tested against Hungary. Um, no disrespect to Andorra, but there's a decent chance that Andorra won't have too many opportunities let's say in the game because they're definitely the weaker the two nations so could you imagine like playing Geller or Bazuna there and they don't have anything to do it just feel like you know a little bit of a waste but against Hungary I've no doubt they might have a bit extra to do like you know they definitely will and look Hungary are going to the Euros like you know they, they've earned the right to play there they've obviously won their games and they've got enough points to qualify so they're by no means a pushover and they will give us a test so very true what you're saying. Like, you know, give the boys a game and I think put them up against someone who's, you know, going to have shots in them, who's going to test them. Because if we're against Andorra, you know, they probably will be doing a lot of standing around. I probably will only be calling into action, hopefully, anyway, a few times in the game against Andorra if they were playing against Andorra. So that, that is a bit of, um, you know, a one for, for Kenny to think about who does he play and why, the reasons behind it, like. 100%, 100%. There will be changes because the games are, uh, you know, they're going very close to each other as well. So there's no doubt be changes there. I suppose the defenders, we've got the likes of, you know, Seamus Coleman, Doherty, McLean, interestingly, is named as a defender, which is interesting. Duffy, uh, O'Shea, Egan is back as well. But we've got Rob Manning, Leo Connors in there as well, actually. And I'll try a stab at this. <laughs> Omo Bamidela. Omo Bamidela. Omo Bamidela. Yeah. <laughs> try him no but in fairness though he's been doing very well for Norwich in the last 7-8 games he's only 19 I have heard of him but I haven't seen him play in the last number of games for Norwich City um, it's nice to see players like that coming in though isn't it let's be honest and breaking through at Norwich and hopefully he gets to play in the Premier League which would be great I was very pleasantly surprised with Stephen mm. Kenny including him I thought he would have been another 21 player you know mm. like bringing someone in who was only 19 into the senior setup, and you know what he said, right? They blood these young lads, bring them in, show them what the setup's about, show them what the Ireland squad's about, and get him in, get him pushing other people for places. He has, you know, he's a winner, like he won the league with Norwich, he's a Premier League player now, he's slotted in there very well. 
He's had plaudits from people. He even scored a goal for them this season. He's played the last two months and started in the heart of defence for them and played every game the whole way through. And, you know, I've seen highlights of him. I think we've all kind of took a bit of a look at him and see what he's about. Um, I hope he plays. I hope he gives him a game and let's see what he's about. He's, you know, a six foot two tall defender. He was born in Ireland. So, yeah, he's very young. Let's see what he's about. And I'm very excited that he's in the team. I'm very happy about that. Funnily enough, the defence is actually, I always say the defence is reasonably good there. Obviously, Coleman, Doherty. Uh, Leo Connor is a player I like a lot as well. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't seen him play for Tranmere much, but I did see him play for the under-21s, Irish squad under Kenny quite a bit. Player I liked. He, he did play for Ireland, actually, already, and I believe he set up a goal, if I, if I remember correctly. He crossed one in, in in one of the games. I can't remember the game, actually. Can you, by any chance? But he definitely set up a goal. Um, you know, but yeah. um, he, he's a player I think to watch out for so I can play right and left back. Uh, obviously, O'Shea is a good player, we know that. Um, Duffy and Egan, you know, you've experienced there as well. But interestingly, as I mentioned before, James McLean, um, I actually think he's more suited, a bit like Kilban at the end of his career, in a way, uh, when he went back to left back for Ireland. I think he's a little bit more suited because you can never deny McLean's work rate. Um, he, he does lack a lot of technical qualities going forward. Doesn't need that as much if he's playing left back though. Obviously, Stevens is out as well, by the way. So, and he, look, if he's going to be playing with inexperienced players at the backs or lads that haven't been included, in, you know, much in Ireland squads in the past, we're going to need that experience. We're going to need someone with passion, determination, someone who, with leadership skills, the qualities and traits who can get in there and, and you know really anchor the team at the back. And you know, his pace obviously will be you know that could be going a bit now with age. Like he's pushing on a bit, but he's vastly experienced he's one of, it's probably the one of the most experienced in this current squad I think and look there's no doubt his work rate there's no doubt his passion and interestingly looking at the backs there's actually no left sided defender name there's no left back name so he must be going to think about either going with three the back again with wing backs he could be playing Doherty left back or Shea left back or McLean's probably going to go there because he was named in the defenders as we've seen. So. Even O'Connor can play left back as well. O'Shea has played all across the back four for West Brom. Now again, I prefer him either right back or centre back personally, but he can play left back I suppose. And uh, But you're right, it'd be interesting if McLean actually plays one of the games at left back as well because I can see nearly all these players playing some part over the course of the two games personally. Um, like if I was playing O'Connor, for example, I probably wouldn't play uh, O'Connor and uh, Omo Badmadila. <laughs> I'm going to struggle with that for a while. In the <laughs> same team, I'd probably play one in one game and one in the other game, you know, and then play an Egan or say a Duffy with them rather than mix exactly. them up, mix up the new yeah. and the old rather than just play all the new, let's say, ish and all the older players. So I th- think he might do that as well. Um, you know, regarding the midfield, then you've got Josh Cullen, Horhan, Arthur, Knight, Malumbi. Uh, McGrath, Manger, I suppose, are the two that stick out to a lot of people there. Um, I think with Jamie McGrath, I think he deserves it. He's been St. Mirren's best player this season. That's coming from St. Mirren fans, not from me. Um, and it just shows another example. Like, it's another, um, you know, I know Manger's there as well, but it's another, uh, I don't know, kick up for the Irish Le- League of Ireland because uh, McGrath was in the League of Ireland with Dundalk and has gone on, moved to St. Mirren, and now gets his mark, gets his. Uh, time in the Irish squad and it's not as if he has been with Dundalk and playing League of Ireland for a few years as well so he's not 20 years of age so um, you know it's good to see that as well and I think he actually deserves it to be honest He definitely deserves it you know he went in there he's gone to the Scottish League as we all know and people have been keeping an eye on him and you know he, he scored goals he, he set up goals I've seen highlights of him he's playing a bit further up the fields further up than he would have played back here he slotted him really, really well in there and he's really got his plaudits and everyone's raving about him over there. He's definitely a top player over there. I actually wouldn't be surprised if he gets to move in the summer. You know, there is speculation. He could be moving to the Championship League One. Is that step up and sit down? You know, but it's, you know, he's playing really well. He definitely deserves the call up and I'm delighted Stephen Kenny included him and didn't go with the same old that we all know. He said, look, he's in form. He's playing well. He's confident. Give him a chance. He's, he's so right and I'm delighted that he's there. Do you see him actually um, starting any of the games? No, I don't see him starting, but I definitely see him coming on anyway. Uh, likewise, I don't see Danny Manjeo starting any games, but um, I do see him playing a part and coming on. What do you make of the Danny Manjeo inclusion? I suppose that was the big surprise, let's be honest, wasn't it? Look, as a Boas man myself, <laughs> now, I can't, I can't really say too much about Danny. <laughs> he left Boas on a sound, but putting that aside... 
I'm yeah. delighted for any League of Ireland player to get called up. It's great. He's keeping an eye on the league. That he's calling players up and he's taking out of players who are playing well. Funnily enough, a few Rovers fans have been saying, and like, you know, there's other players that have been playing on Rovers that, have, in their opinion, have been better. Like, mm. so, you know, it's interesting that you call him up, and hopefully, you know, if he does play, he comes on and does well for himself. I'm delighted that a League of Ireland player got included. I think the difference with Mandrew and, uh, yeah, Shamrock Rovers fans are probably right that way as well, but he has the ability, though. He's more ability than any other Shamrock Rovers player, to be honest. That's the difference. He it? does. Like, and that's why you know, he's been anyone... brought up. He's 22 years of age as well. Yeah, any, anyone that watches League for Ireland, you know, they know about what Danny Manju. They know what he can do. He's a dead ball specialist. You know, he can make a moment. Score Manjou from long game. range as well, something that Ireland struggle with, let's be honest. That's it. Like, you know, and there's no Jack Byrne this time. You know, he, he's not there. He's out. So it's his time for Danny Manju to come in and be the next, you know, big king from the League of Ireland, if, if you will, and come in and make an appearance for Ireland and see what he can do. What do you make of the other midfielders? Obviously, Josh Cullen, Horahan, we've got Harry Arthur in there. Jason Knight, um, a young player, has had a great season for Derby County as well. And uh, Jason Malumby, who's probably had a disappointing season. But overall, what do you make of those inclusions? Yeah, look, um, I think, first of all, we should probably start with Horahan. He's having a terrific season. He's in the playoff final. He's doing really well with Swansea. Like, he's, he's playing really, really well with them. He's in form. He's confident. He's scoring free kicks. He's setting players up. He's excellent. He'll start. He'll play. And he's doing really, really well. Knight, as we know, you know, he's playing at Derby. Derby got lucky. He escaped. Nearly went down. Um, I blame look, Wayne Rooney for that. <laughs> yeah. Rooney applauds him. He, he raves about him. And, yeah. you know, if, if Rooney really, really rates him. So, delighted to see Knight there. That's really Captain good. Derby, Pulling. actually. Didn't he? Captain Derby, actually. He has, yeah, yeah, he has. So, you know, that's obviously saying something about his qualities as an individual and personality traits that he may possess himself. Um, Josh Cullen, I haven't actually watched Anderlecht like this season. Um, not, let's be honest, not many of us would, unless we've seen a highlight or he scored a goal or something. You I can't get say time to watch on. all that football. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah. I can't say too much on Josh Cullen, mm. bar from what I've seen with Ireland. But what from what I've seen with Ireland, I like. I was surprised Harry Arthur got included. Um, mm. He has been playing a lot, an awful lot of football. I thought it was a bit of a, you know, a strange one. You know, I'm trying to think not who's not there. Part. Who's not there? Who's been omitted? So obviously James McCarthy. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, he's finished. I think, in my opinion, I'm not being bad to the lad, but the injuries he keeps getting. How do you? He can't keep coming back from those injuries that he's had the last five years. I, I would suggest pretty much. And expect to be yeah. playing international football. He's he's available and free now, I believe, at the end of the season. But he's injured as well, so it'd be, it'd be risk even taking him up if you're a decent enough side as well. Like with wages and that, like yeah. you know, it's unlucky. Like I feel sorry for him to be honest with you. He'd have to be taking a pick off if he goes anywhere. Like you can't be expecting to be on what he's on now, when he just can't stay fit, unfortunately. And it's so sad because he had a lot of promise in his Wigan days ten years ago. He was a splendid player like years ago, and I thought. This guy now, he's going to get 100 caps for Ireland. You will be thinking that at a young age. And mm. unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Um, he did play against Liverpool, but, mm. you know, he's gone. I think uh, an obvious one that's not there is Jeff Hendrick. Um, he's been a mainstay in, in the team, whether he's been in form for his club or not. He, he's just always been picked. He's not there. Um, Do you uh, think that's you know, the right decision? Would... Yes. Give him, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't performed at the national level. He hasn't earned the right really to play for Ireland this season and wait and he hasn't done enough like you know give other players a chance Um, I'd like to see Jorge and Knight play together I think they would be a good partnership together I think they've done well I think I think they have played together beside each other in the Ireland set up I reckon he'll go three in midfield though and I think you're right though uh, who did you say Jorge and Knight I think Cullen might play with them um, in one of the games maybe the hungry game the one where he thinks it's the harder game as such um, I can see that happening. Malumpy is a good player, but hasn't really been brilliant this season. But from what I've seen and heard, Cullen is um, a player that's doing well. And you're right about Horan. Uh, he's probably the first name in the team sheet in midfield at this minute in time. And uh, and Knight, yeah, get get someone with Knight's energy in there as well. Yeah, definitely. Knight's got a terrific work rate. You know, he's up and down. He could play on the right side as well. He could slot in. He's a bit of versatility about him. And you know, when you're Ireland, you need a player that can play a few positions. You know, if you've got an injury in the game, if if you've got a sending off and you if you know you've got someone that can start in another position, that's great. I remember Mick McCarty tried Jorge in left back before. He probably even remembers that. So, yeah, Not a fan. I no, I remember it. I'm, I'm making a face because I wasn't a fan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, um, 
the midfield, you know, go just going through it there again. There's no real surprises, bar the likes of oh, happy Johnny Mandrews there, happy Jamie McGrath there. Jason Lumby hasn't been playing that much. He's been included, as we know. Jason he's funny enough to play well for Ireland when he's played, despite not playing for his club very often, which is strange. So, yeah, like that's good for right, us. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, that's good for us. So, I suppose we can't complain about him in that sense, you know. I can see him getting some game time anyway. Mm-hmm. I can see him definitely making an appearance and coming on anyway. Forwards, then, when I say forwards, like they're including wingers here. So, you've got Cal- you've got Robinson, you've got Collins, you've got Ida. Great to see him back. Connolly, who's had a few injury issues. Parrish, who had um, a strange season, didn't he? He was at Millwall and struggled a bit and has played out position and everything. Did better at Ipswich at a lower level, but uh, Og Benny is in now as well. Curtis and Horgan. Um, for me personally, I think um, Ida is the man we need to kind of, he's the man that needs to lead the line going forward because I think he's been injured with Norwich and that, but when he's come in, he's done quite well. I've seen him a lot of under 21s as well. I think he's got every attribute going for him. He's decent in the air. He can work on that, but he's got that. Um, he can run the channels. He can hold up the ball. He's got a bit of pace for a big lad's strength and a decent finisher. I think he's the one for me that... Um, don't expect him to get Robbie Keane goals because I think people's expectations are unrealistic, let's be honest. But I think he's the man that could really lead the line for us going forward. And if you could get a Conley or maybe Ock Benny because he's quite quick in and around them, it's going to help a lot. Um, do you see either starting at least one of the matches anyway? I definitely do. You know, he, he's went with him at the start. Like, you know, he played him up front. I think it was two games in a row. He let him lead the line when he wasn't even getting into the Norwich team. You know there's a plenty of eyebrows raised then, and mm. you know he's a young lad, and as you said, people can't be expecting him to come in and just start scoring goals. He's by no way means the finished article. He's still very, very young. Like he's still young enough to play under twenty one football. A lot of people are forgetting that. And it's not like he's you know been starting and he's been injured and stuff. So look, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on him. I'm not expecting him to score lots of goals, but I am expecting that if he does play to put a shift in, have a strong work weight, and press from the front and. Try and get a goal. Try and nick one. You know, chase the play down and play to his strengths, his attributes, like you said, strong, quick, hold the ball up. Try and do things like Still that. Still raw, but you can. I can see him because when I've seen him live as well, all those attributes he has, which is great going forward. I think, like you know what I mean. Hopefully, he'll get some games from Norwich next season as well in the Premier League. But I think he's the type of player we need to just let him play. And Kenny was starting to do that because of what we have available as well and just let him get more experience, 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 hopefully gets better and better and better because we don't really, like Collins, people say, oh, Collins should play, but Collins isn't going to get any better. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's, and he's exactly. probably not like, even better than Ida, even as we speak at their ages, Ida's probably better than him as well, if I'm honest with you, in terms of everything he offers a forward line. Do you know what I mean? Collins, you can bring on in games and things like that. But he also has a good relationship with Connolly. Um, he played well with Connolly at the under-21s. He linked up very well. So that's another one to look out for as well, I think. Yeah, and he's played Connolly um, on, on the left side as well, of the mm. front three, if you will. You know, mm. it, I think I think a lot of this too depends, especially if every other position, the formation Kenny goes with. You know, if he goes a three at the back, who is he going to play in midfield? Because you're going to have a lot more midfielders. If it goes three up front, you're going to probably have one striker and two wingers or inverted wingers. So mm. it all depends on who he goes with. But I think Conley is, you know, he's a good player and he does offer something as well. So he's, look, these all these players are very, very young. Like, mm. especially Parrot, he's so young. People have so much high expectations for him. For Conley, he's very young. I, they're very young. Like, you know, and then Collins, like you said, 29, I think, 30, 10 goals this season. Does lead the line for Luton very well, I think. But doesn't offer too much more than what we already have, I think. Really I certainly have him in the squad, but if we're thinking of uh, the bigger picture and going forward, like Collins isn't going to be the man, he's not going to really improve so much, whereas someone like Ida will, if you know what I mean. Um, but as well as that, Ogben, Ogbeni actually from Rotherham is a player that excites me in terms of uh, pace because um, that's something we lack a lot of the time. You're on about strikers and that, but it's great when you have wingers who have the pace to get in behind as well, particularly if a striker drops deep. And um, I think he could be a could be an interesting player. I think he's 23, isn't he? 23, 24. He was at Limerick before, I don't know if you remember, but uh, he's an interesting is, yeah. one as well, isn't he? Watch out for Yeah, him. I was actually I was surprised now he included him, but obviously Kenny was looking at these games and thinking, look, there's no qualifiers, there's no pressure in these games. Barney to win, try something new, bring new players in. 
he said himself, he's like, some of these players, they probably won't make international grade to the level that people will be thinking, as in, in the tens of caps, if you will. But look, it's great to see new players involved and the same old players that were always there. Like, you know, they're coming, they've had a longer season. They've had injuries, they've had COVID, they've been in and out of form, in and out of teams. So it's brought new players in. We're against Andorra and Hungary. I hope to stay up better play. He's got pace about him. He can dribble really well and he can cross the ball. He hasn't, you know, he's been playing in Rotterdam. Um, I don't think many people would have really watched him or know too much about him. So it's definitely a chance for him to show what he's about and come on and see what he can do. Yeah, it's something I'd love us to have his pace because, um, like, we've had the likes of Robbie Brady out there as well. And let's be honest, injuries have kind of, you know, he's, he's not the player he was for a long time now because of injuries, really, I think, in my opinion. Anyway, and uh, Robinson flits in and out, doesn't he, a little bit? Um, and it's hard to know where his best position is. He's one of those players. Um, but again, useful to have in the squad, like, you know what I mean? Um, but probably not a player you'd be looking to start in general, but he could well start in one of these games, in all fairness, couldn't he, though? I'd say he definitely could. But like, have him above know. Curtis and Horgan, to be honest with you. Yeah, you would. Like, you know, Curtis has been in sensational form for Portsmouth again this season. He's yeah. had very, very well for them. But look, Robinson had a full year in the Premier League. Curtis was in League One. There's a huge difference between there and the goals from class. A huge difference. So, obviously, you know, he went down like with West Brom. But it'd be interesting to see where he puts him, where he plays him, if he plays him. And, you know, where he's going to, you know, where is Robinson going to fit into this team? Like you said, it's hard for a position. Is he a striker? Is he a pressing forward? Is he a winger? Is he on the left? Is he on the right? You know, but he's interesting. You can bring him on and see what he can do. This is experimental. This is going to be rotation. The usual players, a lot of them are here. So, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Look, Daz, thanks for coming on. Guys, please like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit your bell notification button so you don't miss the video. Let us know in the comments, guys, what maybe what 11 you'd pick, and what players were left out that you'd bring in, etc., etc., and what you think generally. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers, Daz.